From the startup screen, click on Open, browse to Chapter 11, and open the file Chapter 11 Pipes. In this exercise, I just want to discuss the difference between pipe placeholders and pipes. And the best way to show this is to change the detail level of my view to Fine. Let's just scroll in to the south part of the building. Here I can create a pipe placeholder. I give it its diameter, its offset from the current level, its pipe type, and the system type, and draw the pipe from one point to another. If I do the same with the pipe tool, check its diameter, its offset, its type, and system type, and draw the same type of pipe. We can see that these pipes look quite different. I can select both of them using a crossing window and change their size. Both of them I can change their system type and their offset from the current level. Looking at the conceptual toolbar, we can apply a slope, we can change the type, we can reapply type, and we can convert placeholder, but that will only apply to the placeholder duct. We can also use the duct and pipe sizing tool. So why bother using the pipe placeholder? If we were to extend the run of the full size pipe, so let's draw a pipe from that point and create a bend. I'll do the same for the pipe placeholder. The pipe placeholder doesn't contain fittings. This makes it easier to change the design. If I use the tab key to select the run, I can now pick on this grip and change the run very easily. I can do the same by highlighting a full pipe run, but editing this does start getting harder. You can see that I can't drag the endpoints. And if I select the end of one of the pipes, we start breaking the integrity of our run pretty quickly. The only properties that a pipe placeholder doesn't have in comparison to the pipe is the ability to justify or add insulation. But at the stage of the project we're actually creating pipe placeholders, those particular options are not usually required.